If improving your watercolor skills sounds great, then you are in the right place. Grab something to drink and watch till the very end, because this video is going to be packed with useful tricks. My name is Katarzyna Kmiecik, and right now I'm going to show you how I painted this watercolor of a flying parrot while explaining every step of it. I start with the rough outlines of the flying parrot. The bird needs to have the right proportions and to be correctly placed in the middle of the sheet of paper. Never underestimate the value of a good sketch. Just remember to keep the first lines delicate or you may destroy the watercolor paper trying to erase them. The reference picture that you are seeing in the corner was made by Home of Pirates on Instagram. Once I'm happy with the shape of my parrot and its placing, I start to add more details to the sketch. Now, I'm removing the excess sketch lines from around the parrot. I would skip this step if I would be certain that the paint on the background would completely cover those lines. I'm not using any masking fluid this time, so I just make sure to make only the background wet, not the parrot. I am doing it very precisely only around the head and the chest of the parrot while intentionally wetting some tips of the feathers. In those areas I want the watercolor to flow freely, so the colors of the background and the parrot would blend. I start painting background with the light green that's made up of ptalo green and natural sienna light. Then I'm gradually making the colors darker. I'm using mineral violet and paints grain for the darkest areas. As you can probably see already, I've decided to change the background of this watercolor painting to make the parrot pop out even more.
at some places I am intentionally leaving the paper sipping through the layer of paint. It's always a plus if you manage to maintain some of the brightness of the paper and the vibrancy of the first layers of watercolour. This is what I usually do when I see some uncontrolled blooming occurring. I remove the excess water and add another layer of a thicker paint that breaks the edge of the bloom to make it less prominent. The subject of the painting, the placement of your bloom and the kind of paper that you are using must allow such a bold move though. I'm starting to paint the parrot using Hansa yellow light and Aquarius orange. Both the tip and the side of the brush are being put into good use. The technique of a dry brush can create some nice texture when painting feathers. While the yellow part is still a bit damp, I add more intense red in the spaces between the feathers and on the parrot's chest. I'm using Aquarius orange and pyro red for that with significantly less water. Now I continue to add colour to the parrot's head, wing and tail. Some of that red colour can then be washed off the paper with a dagger brush, with a delicate yellow tint on it. 
This will add a bit of a third dimension to the feathers and can be used in other parts of our bird as well. Here I am adding some purple to the tips of the feathers that I intentionally left unfinished before so the parrot and the background would nicely blend. It's a mix of mineral violet and paints grey. adding a delicate tint to some of the areas that are still blank and continue to paint the feathers on the wings. Just as in the previous step, my first layer is transparent tallow blue and I will be only adding shadows mixed from paints grey and tallow blue on top of it.
I'm spraying my painting with water whenever I feel it would be nice to walk on a slightly damp surface or when I want watercolor to spread in an uncontrolled manner to create some beautiful effects for me. Adding some cobalt teal accents can work magic in this step. So as before, I am adding a third dimension to the wings by lifting some of the dark blue color with a dagger brush that's tinted with the cobalt teal. If I want even brighter color or white, I remove the excess paint and the water with a paper towel. Now only the blue feathers of the parrot's tail remain unpainted, so I'm going to repeat those same steps here.
it's time to finally walk on the pirate's beak, eye and some basic shadows on the wrinkled skin of the face. I'm using the mix of Payne's Grey and Mineral Violet again. It's better to add several softer layers of watercolor when working on a face than to try to get it right the first time. This way you can add more pigments as you go and it's much less possible that it will end up overly saturated. I want the red feathers to be more vibrant so now I'm adding another layer of paint. I let the previous layer seep through just as before. In this part, I decided to take the risk and just let the red watercolor flow. It could obviously end up being a disaster, but this time it worked well and I think it's making my painting more dynamic. It also makes the pirate blend with the background in a very natural way. Now let's add some shadows under the wing and the chest to instantly bring more realism to the picture. A bit more intensity to the red feathers of the tail, some splashes of paint and the picture is almost ready. I only felt the need to adjust some colors of the feathers 
splash even more paint around the tail, soften up some harsh edges around the right wing and to separate some feathers on the left. I just love how easy it is to lift dried paint from Winsor Newton watercolor paper. If you are not done learning, there are lots of tutorials on my Instagram as well, so go ahead and find me there if you wish. If you enjoyed this video, you can help my channel grow by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And remember to come back every week to see what's new. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time!